Welcome to The One Who Seeks, where you are the one who seeks. My name is Tara. I am your intuitive tarot reader. I use tarot as a tool to open up the channels of your intuition. By tapping into your unawakened subconscious, you will answer the questions that you seek. I am not a psychic, although it may seem like it sometimes. Take what resonates and leave the rest. Always remember, the freedom of choice is your power. Only you can make it happen with your actions. What are you seeking? Hello and welcome to One Who Seeks, where you are the one who seeks. What are you seeking? I portrayed myself with a clear and malleable bubble that reflects what needs to be seen for your highest good and for the good of others. I, I invite in only that is of love to join us in this collective reading. I ask the Archangels Michael to protect us with light so bright that it surrounds us. Gabriel to help us be a clear and open channel to the messages coming in. Raphael to guide us on our path to enlightenment. Thank you for being present in the here and now with us. Please get comfortable. We are open and receptive to our own intuitions and we honor the emotions and lessons that will be revealed to us. Please send us signs we will recognize to let us know you are here with us. Thank you everyone here for joining. I have been having so many issues with technology. Uh, none of my cameras really want to work for me. Um, feeling a little challenged here, got to admit. So we are going back to the iPhone which we originally started with and um, see how it goes today, right? And because you know, I'm kind of feeling a little out of sorts lately, right? So I don't know if anybody else is feeling it right now. It's Pisces season, um, it's the two fish, it's a water sign. It's, you know, emotional. So, just trying to get into the groove of everything. Um, I keep having dreams about the world card. <laughs> like, I have spreads in my head while I'm dreaming, right? And I try to remember what they say to me when, at the time I wake up, but... I usually don't remember, but the world card did stick out to me. Um, so there are definitely new beginnings on the horizon. So we are going to do the mind, body, and spirit spread. This is a three card spread. And we're going to do a pick a deck. Okay, so I've already pre-drawn the cards. And I've pulled some stones. So in pile number one, we have understand and spirit. And I chose the high priestess for every deck because she really represents all knowing. Uh, that's the mind, the body, and the spirit. It's everything together. It's this, this star, right? It's everything. It's all the elements. 
And so I just really wanted to tap into connecting with yourself again. Uncluttering the mind, talking to spirit, understanding, feeling out the body, grounding yourself here with earth. I do doing things with your body, All right? And pile number three, I see water, I see emotions. Just take a minute or so. I'm not really going to give you a minute, but you're going to pause it if you need a minute and uh, pick your piles one, two, and three. And I'll put timestamps in the video as well so you can jump straight to it. Um, I'm feeling really anxious. My palms are really clammy. Yeah, I feel warm. Yet it's very cold out and it's cloudy and it'll start raining eventually. Um, and just kind of feel like out of body right now. Um, take a few breaths. Clear out some of that energy, some of that stagnation that's building up inside your lungs. <sighs> Loosen up the shoulders. Since they're super tense, the neck is practically immobile. All the muscles are so tight. I want to bring some relaxation to this reading. I want to thank Spirit for being here to guide us. Any information that needs to come through today. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So I do want to mention as well, so spirit is all encompassing with all, um, all four elements, right? Fire, earth, air, and water. And then spirit is at the top. And then earth is associated with Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn. And water is associated with Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. You know, so Earth is about practical, stable, reality check, economics, responsibility, values. And then we have the water signs, which are emotion, intuition, ideals, expressive, therapist, under the surface. Okay, so like I, I said, we're gonna want to bring some togetherness, right? Some some stability, calm these emotions. All right, I'm gonna leave that one there. Okay, so this is pile number one. We have the High Priestess. Okay, I guess we'll leave her here. Actually, put her right here. That's why I put her last time. Okay. Okay, we have the Mind, the Body. Ooh, sexy body, right? And the spirit. I'll set these aside so they're not so distracting. 
All right, in your mind. So it feels kind of like an open vault, right? This is like almost like a, a church or um, reminds me of a train car. It's a very beautiful, it's for the most elite. Uh, it looks like there's a bunch of trophies here with all these cups. This is the nine of cups. Yeah, it's about wisdom. That's what, you know, originally I said, it reminds me of like the vault of your mind, right? The windows of your mind, the windows of your eyes. Yeah, and you got this breeze blowing for, through and it feels very good and relaxing and it doesn't feel chaotic. It's not like the wind is coming in to where it's knocking all these cups over. But it also looks like you're in space here. You're in this kind of train car, but you're in space. So where does that actually lead to? Does that just kind of fall off of a, a cliff there? Like you just fall out of the sky as if you were um, jumping out of a plane? Uh, we call that parachuting, skydiving. You know, you definitely have a lot of emotions here. But they're all being displayed. They're almost being displayed as if you were going to present them to these different winners. Or maybe, you know, it's like museum style and you just have a special room dedicated to all your trophies and all of your achievements. You know, this could even be your office. This is where you move through your mind through your emotions, through the universe. But you're very comfortable here. You are very abundant within your mind. You have a lot of knowledge. You have a lot of knowledge about your emotions specifically and how you can move through them quickly. And you can stop at the next station, which could be at any emotion, anger, sadness, happiness, joy. There's several of them. You know, it depends on how long you're going to stop at that train station. Are you going to get off? Where, where is your destination? Are you at anger and you're going to joy? So you get in this train car and then you get off at joy and you stay at joy for a long period of time? Or are you gonna stay in anger? Are you gonna get off at anger? It's up to you, it's your choice on how you handle your emotions and where you stay. And you understand this and spirit is helping you with this because all the elements come together is what's gonna help you make these decisions. Feelings lead to actions. What is your action going to be? What is your dis dis decision? See, I can't even talk today, right? Like my tongue feels swollen. 
it's really hard to get these words out and be able to enunciate. Maybe this train car isn't moving at all. Maybe there's some sort of issue on the track. But it's okay because you're very comfortable here. You just need to decide when you're going to walk through that door, through those curtains, towards the breeze, out in the open. When you're going to express your mind and your emotions, your emotional intelligence, because you have a lot of it. You have a lot of windows here. You're able to see several different perspectives. Okay, and then we have the body. And we literally have a body. And um, this looks like a ballet dancer. What is this? This is four, seven, yeah, seven of cups. So we have a lot of emotions going on here with all the cups and then you have the star which normally she has a couple of jugs and she's in in the water um, she still has some water here but there's nothing containing it this is all free here right to where this is all being contained into smaller portions Yeah, so it makes me think of um, eating and maybe you need to make smaller portions while you're eating and not eat so much all at one time. All right, this is a lot of cups to be drinking out of or eating out of, all right? She can only hold the two until she literally becomes the cup. <laughs> it's funny because she's coming out of here like she's the snake, right? And when a snake charmer comes and he's playing his instrument to, to bring out the snake, she's kind of coming out of that, that basket, the cup, and then the snake is wrapped around her and the snake is looking in this cup that she's holding. Which reminds me of like a, a dog going to its bowl, checking out what's in there. Is there any food in there now? My dogs do that all the time. You know, so you need to watch the weight of what you're eating. You know, even look at the ingredients of what you're eating, what is in there. So that you can look this good and feel that good. This beautiful lady. And she has balance. She looks good, she feels good. She's on top of the world. She's got these columns behind her. She's in the clouds. Maybe you need to get out and dance. Get your body moving. And when you don't move your body, it becomes pretty stagnant and then you have a lot of issues, which could lead to overeating too. You know, it's um, become sort of a depression 
You need to get out there and be active and do things that make you feel good, that make you feel on top of the world. And then we have spirit, which is the star. And she, this is wishes granted and she's wishing upon the star, gazing up in the sky, asking for advice from spirit. Building that connection, you know, here is spirit here. So that you can be this high priestess. You're all knowing. Okay, well, let's see. So, let's ask a question here. Who is most affected by my decision? A good decision is based on knowledge and not on numbers. Plato, number 11. Interesting. You know, and over here, we're talking about making a decision to walk through this door. And you have all this knowledge, right? It's not based on the numbers. So there are a lot of cups here. And there are a lot of windows. And then we also have some checkers. So there's, a, you know, a lot of numbers if you're counting all these things up. Right, so the good decision is based on your knowledge, not what your ego is saying. All right, I have all these trophies. Look how many trophies I have. It's based on the knowledge. Who is most affected by my decision? So in order for you to make this decision, go through these curtains. Who's that going to affect? Is that just affecting you? Because here you're taking care of your body and then you're taking care of your spirit. By being connected, you're grounding yourself, getting out into nature, walking around, right? This is that exercise. Like, you know, this is what you need to do. You have the knowledge. This is what you need to do. But you're just sitting here. You gotta get up, get out in the open, maybe even go camping, look up at the stars, go hang out in the creek, hang out in the mountains, reflect out to the sky. Who, who's going to be affected by these decisions that you make to be healthier, to eat right, to get some movement, to start dancing, to start feeling good? You are. You're going to be the most affected. And then it's going to trickle. And it's going to be contagious, right? This feel-good feeling is very contagious. Because when you feel good, you make others feel good. When you feel bad, you make others feel bad. It's about the vibrations. And you understand this. Okay, and there's something about unity. We got a two. We have the 11. It's a master number. Which basically would just stay as an 11. But it can also break down as a two. Which is about unity. So, you know, there might be um, 
somebody else involved here, or maybe it's just spirits. Spirit is the union that you need to have. Your body is a temple, okay? Take care of your body. Spirit will come to that temple. And then you can better understand what choices and decisions that you need to make. All right. All right, let's see. Oh, we got the Joker. Radioactive. Wow. Okay. Yo, Ray. Night. You're around a night. <laughs> so this looks like fool's gold, basically. Um, and it's on a joker card, right? Maybe you're fooling yourself into believing something else right now. Um, somebody else might be fooling you, too. So let's see what kind of a, um, what we got going on here. Looks like we have much of a, a deck here. I mean, as far as a hand goes, we got 69. So, you know, don't, don't be a fool. Don't be the joker playing on somebody else's strings. You know, this could be even her like like a puppet. Don't be a puppet. And then we have Harmony, Wisdom, um, New Beginnings, Completion of Something, New Beginnings, and we have Nurturing, Motherly Vibrations. All right, nurture yourself. Don't be a fool. We have topaz, garnet, hermaphite, hem, hemarphite. See, even with the thing, it's hard for me to say these. <laughs> and uh, cal copyright. Calco Pyrite. Uh, we have a lot of orange, kind of golden, golden colors, golden orange, a little bit of green. Wasp Spirit. Sometimes life stings. Uh huh. Sixty four. Uh, new beginnings again so something's coming to an end for something else to begin and a wasp if it stings you it hurts <laughs> it does not feel good it hurts um, sometimes life stings right for this ending to happen though for something new to begin you had to get stung by this wasp in order to bring you out of this joker mentality. Hummingbird spirit, be here now. Uh, do it now. Make that decision now to feel this good. This is seven. This is about spirit. Hummingbirds are really fast. And it's interesting. Both of these have wings. You know, they flutter really fast. Their heart beats really fast. But they have a lot of precision. Even though they're buzzing around you and you're swatting at it or, you know, maybe for a wasp, not so much for a hummingbird, but you're swatting at it and, you know, it 
it just keeps coming at you, right? You can't see it. So it being small actually gives it an advantage. You know, and that could be to do something with your weight again. Like, if, you know, if you're small, it's easier for you to move around. Right, if you don't have all this extra weight that you're carrying. You have new moon in Aries, go for it. And here we go again with the mountains. And you see the mountains over here in the star. She's looking at the stars, there's the moon, new moon in Aries. So Aries is a fire sign. It's about energy, creativity, motivation, life force, inspiration, heart, and expansion. Right? You need to have that motivation so that you can get the energy, right? And you kind of get that energy from having the mo motivation. You know, fire is about passion and moving forward quickly. Do it now. Be here now. Go for it. Full moon in Libra. Here we get the mountains again. And we're literally on the path now, though. Before, we're just looking at it. We're wishing. This is, this is what we want. We want to feel good. We want to have this energy. We want to lose this weight. You know, we're looking at it again here and we're going, okay, we're making this decision to go for it. And then now we're finding our balance and we're walking on that path. Libra is all about balance. And now you're taking this path and you get these like flowers leading your way. There's already a road here. This is a well-traveled path. It's not something that you have to come up with. You know, just follow the road. There's already a road paved out for you. You just need to find it. And then we have seven again, which is spirit, Jupiter, abundance, right? This is going to bring you a lot of abundance. And there's a face in here. Got the Jupiter sign. You got Jupiter here. We have the lightning striking. You know, these are these ideas. This is your wish granted. It's striking you. You are abundant. You're connected with spirit. This is very connected with spirit. And then we have Chiron healing. It's an eight, which is also a Virgo energy. Looks like there's a one of those man horses. I don't know what you call them. But it almost looks like Jesus here, too. And we have, like, a fairy godmother of some sort. Oh, well, maybe not. She's got an axe in her hand. <laughs> right? I don't... That's, like, very ominous there. Right? That's... It's, like, self-infliction. <laughs> um... It's like he, she's comforting him, but he looks scared. And then she has this axe in her hand. So, I mean, that's <laughs> just because this is different, maybe. You feel outcasted, shunned. Maybe you feel like you're, you're being, you know, 
your head's about to be cut off, um, or, you know, this other part of you is going to be cut off, right? Because you're healing. You're cutting off some fat, right? I was thinking like electric shock. I think didn't they used to do that <laughs> back in the day and think that you would lose weight if you got shocked or something. So maybe there's somebody here because there's a lot of unity here as well, but I don't really see a lot of other people here. Um, somebody's going to help you with maybe losing this weight. Um, or just be because, you know, spirit's going to be helping you. But you have to take the action. You have to go through those curtains to get here. And then we have seven, eight, so we were progressing. Okay. All right, uh, let's see. Let's ask, clarifying real quick. I wanna know who is this other person that we're supposed to have unity with? Is this just spirit or is this someone else? Who is this other person? Okay, let's see. I don't even know what card this is. <laughs> Maybe the Ace of Pentacles, right? And this is the vice versa. Yeah, I, yeah, <laughs> this is spirit for sure. Right? So this is you here with your your question. Right? Your faith, whatever, what it is you're seeking. And you come to this pentacle here. Which looks like it might be... Um, a symbol of one of the archangels, possibly. And then this is showing you what's on the other side of this pentacle. And this definitely, these aren't normal, right? This is the same thing here as this man horse, right? Now we got like a lizard man, uh, what's that, a dog, a dog man. And then she actually has the body of like um, a lioness with the head of, of either a queen or some sort of like a Viking. It feels very Viking-like. Right, so spirit is helping you here with this to shed off this part of you that is no longer needed, that is holding you back. This could just be physical weight because of your body here. This could be something in your mind. Old limiting beliefs which make you eat more, make you less active, right? You need to go out there and find the answers because this is very questionable. What is that? What are these breeds, these hybrid breeds? Actually, I want to know more about that. This is being a little longer than I thought it would be, but um, it's kind of weird. Okay, 
What are these hybrid breeds? The Tower Moment. Three of Cups. And the Ace of Cups. All right, so something that happens unexpectedly, but it has been happening for quite some time. You know, your foundation doesn't just crumble overnight for no reason. There's something that causes it. All right, and this happens over time, but when it actually happens, it's like, boom, right now. Chaos, disaster. Right, and this is, so we're going back to the whole like starting over thing, right? The 10, something needs to end for something new to begin. Okay, here we have collaboration, community gathering, celebration. Okay, with an emotional awakening. You know, we're talking about all of these emotions here. Your spirituality, you're opening up to your intuition, your creativity, the love, right? Which feels foreign to you, feels different, feel kind of out of body, right? I've been talking about feeling out of body. Let's see what else they say on here. Crown sacral, sacral, your sacral chakra, right above your belly button. That's your gut feeling. It's your gut. We're talking about overeating. Mm -hmm. Transformation, celebration, new love. You know, you're definitely going to be transforming because you're going to lose this weight. Whatever the weight is, physical weight, emotional weight. And you're going to find a new love for yourself. Okay, that was pile number one. Watch what you eat. Make the decision to get some action. Get moving. Come in with spirit. So that you understand. Okay. All right, pile number two. This is the dark deck. Okay, we have I do and earth. And this is the mind, the body, and the spirit. All right, this is kind of a new deck for me. I only use it a few times. So we have the Nine of Wands, Page of Swords, and Ace of Wands. Okay, so like pile number one, we have a full circle here. We go on from the nine to the ace. So if you go from nine to ten, it can be added into being a one, which would be your ace. So endings and new beginnings. Okay, this reminds me of... Um, Oh, what is that called? The Nightmare Before Christmas? And this chick is kind of like a skeleton soul here, but she's very sexy. Uh, kind of reminds me of the Adams Family a little bit too. You know, she might even be death herself and she has this full moon behind her.
or she's just somebody who's just not afraid of death because she's all knowing. And then in the mind, it seems like you are trapped in your own mind. There's things that you don't want to see. You kind of have your arms up and covering your, your head. You're blocking your face from any light hitting it. There's all this light around you. It's kind of foggy like a dream. But you got these weird feet. They almost like roots, like tree roots growing into the ground or um, like kind of amphibious looking or uh, like hoofy, but furry. Those could be nightmares. I mean, this is about wisdom and fast movement. You're coming out of the fog. It seems to be spreading. It's like oil and water. You dropped yourself in there and it starts to spread. You're shielding yourself from something that you don't want to know about. You don't want to have the wisdom here, or maybe you're trying to look at it without the light shining in your face. And then over here you have body, it's the uh, page of swords, page is about somebody who's like a teenager, uh, somebody who brings messages, um, swords are also about your mind, so this was the mind on the spread, even though this is the, the uh, passion. Might be looking into something. Um, this person even kind of looks like they are made of smoke here. Because they're kind of swirling here. But they're a little bit more solid on this side. They kind of look like they're in agony. Like they don't feel good because this is the body. And you're just so much in your mind. Okay, and this is about I do and earth. So grounding yourself, um, finances, maybe you're worried about finances. Maybe you need to do something to figure it out, to get out of this fog. Get out of the smoke. It's like it's all smoke and mirrors, right? Which would be like the magician. Something about your your thoughts. There's some messages in, about, in your thoughts. And then we have the wands here, which is also thoughts, right? This is challenges. Uh, this kind of looks like a firecracker. This is your um, spirit. 
right? It looks like a firecracker that went up into the sky and exploded. It's kind of a smaller firecracker, almost a dud. Could be like a match stick. It kind of looks like a match stick. And then we have the smoke here as well. Right, and this is about doing things. So maybe you need to get out of your mind and start physically doing something. Light the fire. Light the fire so you can see better. You know, we are being illuminated here. Without that moon there, you wouldn't be able to see these, like, it either looks like a web or foam on top of water, but this is like going up, right? We need to clear something out so that we can see better. We need to do something to ground ourselves. I keep thinking of a campfire, like light a campfire. Right? We need to burn a burn pile. <laughs> and you keep thinking about it. It's very interesting. Let's see what the other cards have to say. Let's see what this question is. What is the opportunity cost of this decision? This is an eight. This is about manifestation. Hmm. Opportunity cost. <laughs> it's funny because I was thinking, what the heck is an opportunity cost, right? And here they are explaining it. <laughs> a profit, value, or benefit of something that must be given up to acquire or achieve something else. Since every resource, land, money, time, etc. can be put to alternative uses, every action, choice, or decision has an associated opportunity cost. Oh, wow. Okay, well, I know all about that. <laughs> in rebuilding paradise, literally in the smoke, right? Um, it's like the whole can of worms thing, even just doing this channel and learning new things and starting it, there's an opportunity cost. Right? So I always get set back by, okay, uh, let's really get deep down into the tarot and learn tarot even deeper, more than I already know. And that opened up a whole can of worms of, uh, well, I've never posted on YouTube. So now I got to learn how to do YouTube, right? Oh, well, how do I post to YouTube? Well, I post a video to YouTube, right? So how do I make that video? Which takes me back to, okay, which camera am I going to use? What's the lighting going to be like? How am I going to set it up? Uh, what format am I going to use? What's going to be my thing? That's going to, you know, set me apart from everybody else. Uh, turns into video editing and knowing how to do that, how to cut and slice two different camera videos into one, right? And then it takes my time. It takes my money, right? It takes a lot of thinking, a little bit of agony, <laughs> trying to see through the smoke, you know, getting a little frazzled from it, a little depleted. Kind of a little bit of a, a lack of oxygen. 
right? Because it's so much now. I mean, it's still fun. I'm still having a good time. I'm still, I'm becoming all knowing, right? I'm illuminating things that I have not known before. Here's the web, right? The greater YouTube web. The web of different things that I have to learn in order to do the one thing that I started out doing. <laughs> right? Which kind of comes with a cost. It's an emotional cost for sure. It's like, uh, it's not even really so much emotional as it is in the mind. But the mind controls your emotion. Excuse me. Okay. A profit, value, or benefit of something that must be given up to acquire or achieve something else. Right? Since every resource, land, money, time, etc. can be put in put to alternative uses, every action, choice, or decision has an associated opportunity cost. Right, making the decision, how are you going to use this information? To re-spark this. Let's see what kind of poker hand we have here. Oh, we're looking a little better. Um, still not a total winner here, but we got one, two, three, five, seven. Okay. Uh, we got three diamonds and two hearts. Now you have to figure out how are you going to hold this hand for the next round, right? What am I going to get rid of? Am I going to keep all my diamonds? Am I going to keep all my hearts? Am I going to keep the one, two, three? I'm not even sure if that, I think that is something. If I had a, a four or five here, it doesn't matter what suit it is. I'm pretty sure it's uh, a straight. <laughs> I'm not an uh, avid poker player, so would need my little cheat sheet to, to know, but you do have a pretty good hand here, right? It's a good start. You do have to get rid of something though, right? You have to get rid of something. So let's just say I'm going to keep the diamonds, right? I'm going to get rid of these so that I can get two more, right? Where's my deck? Let's see what we get. Two more. <laughs> a jack and a seven. Damn. Yeah, we could have had two sevens here. We also have another heart here. No, so this is the one we just got. Okay, we have new beginnings, we have unity, changes. Uh, we have the Joker, which I would associate with the full, uh, taking a leap of faith, jumping right in, not knowing where this is going to go. Seven's about spirituality. We got a couple spirituality and um, creativity. Gonna get creative with making this decision. Rhyolite, serpentine, fluorotite, turquoise. Galena, limestone, and copper. All right, 
brown bear spirit. Take time out. Nine. This is about wisdom. You know, you're thinking in your head, right? You're learning all these new things. You do need to take a break, though, because you are burning yourself out. There's that cost, the opportunity cost, right? Armadillo spirit, set, the, set healthy boundaries. Yeah. You need to take that time out. Take a break every once in a while. You know, give yourself some slack. Like, you're learning so much. You can't expect that you're just going to know how to do everything all at once and be perfect at it. You got wisdom and we have creativity. You're going to think of something. It's going to, once you gather all of this wisdom, the creativity portion of it is going to come at you really quick. Like a firework. First quarter moon in Aries. Step into your power. Okay. Get, be flexible. Be flexible. Get something new started. Again, with the creativity, the motivation, life force, expansion. First quarter moon in Taurus. Release control. Step into your power. Those almost seem like they're oxymoron with each other. Um, they're opposites, it seems like, but they're really not. You really do step into your power when you release the control. If you go with the flow, you move like smoke, you let it flow, it's gonna create these beautiful images out of the smoke as it's moving around with the negative and the positive. You know, sometimes it will have a ring or a heart or something that you see in the smoke or the light shines on the smoke and just looks really beautiful as it's shining through. Um, there's like a lot of yoga going on here. Uh, once again, getting out into nature. Taurus is about like material things. I'm a material, material girl. Madonna. Um. <laughs> yeah. Uh, economics, like I said, could you be, could be having some kind of issue with um, finances or something? You're looking into your finances as well, right? Um, starting things like this, like a YouTube channel, do cost a little bit of money. It's not, depends on what you're trying to do. You can make the decision to do this and not do that, but you're still spending a little bit of money and you're definitely spending a lot of time. It's not easy. It's not as easy as it looks, right? We have third house messages. Messages in the smoke, like I was saying. You know, there's things that happen in the smoke while it's swirling around. Nine, wisdom. We have eight, nine. We're moving forward. You know, you have to kind of decode everything, right? Once you kind of learn the basics of it, you're still going to have to decode it until you can just like, one day you're just going to look at it and you're going to know exactly what that says. Because you've spent so much time working on it, studying it. And then Libra, I balance a 10 card. This is about endings and new beginnings. 
It looks like a spool or something here. Not really sure this, what this is exactly. Uh, she's kissing her angel. This kind of looks like it might be like your lungs. You know, so you need to have the balance for sure. Um, take the time out for yourself. You know, you're going to need to take a break after being so much in your mind and trying to learn all these new things. You need to have some balance. The angels are here. They're holding you. Just breathe. We're sewing it together. It looks like maybe a needle and thread here. We're bringing it together for you. All right. This also kind of looks like, um, like a water sack. To store your water. Just breathe. Take some time out. This is a lot. Because you're doing a lot. You need to learn how to ground yourself in order to bring this together. Okay, pile number two, it was beautiful. Okay, and pile number three. I see and water and in the mind is the devil, the body and the spirit. Mm -hmm. She's very angelic here, very transformative. Uh, a lot of butterflies. A lot of transformation. Looks like she's almost standing on a moon. <clears throat> she almost looks like she's floating in. Right? So this is I see water. She could even be standing on water. She's floating towards water. She can see. She's all knowing. She could be looking down at the earth from above, watching over, right? And so we have the mind here and we have the devil, um, temptations. Are you going to eat that apple? I know it doesn't even look like an apple, really. It looks kind of like a ball. Actually, kind of looks like those spiral mint candies. The red and white spirals. Um, you might have like a stalker. It looks like you know somebody's watching you. They're watching you, right? I see. It's very emotional. Water here. Um. Let's see here. I'm trying to see what he's got going on here. Oh, it looks like he's playing one of those like little flute things. He's got like a, it's like half deer. Uh, uh, pile number one also had a hybrid. See, these look more like apples up here, but these look like those candies, those little mint candies. Somebody, um, somebody is, trying to seduce you. Maybe you're trying to seduce somebody else. Like this is your mind and, um, you know, you're trying to tempt them with this candy that you have. But it looks like they are seducing you at the same time. 
or somebody's seducing you and you're trying to seduce somebody else. Very strange. Um, and then we have the body. She looks like it's being cut open here. The earth is being cut open. Maybe you're looking for water. It looks like there's snow on the ground. You're just looking for that dirt under there. Um, or you're burying your sword. Maybe you're putting down your thoughts. You're trying to bury your thoughts. Very ominous, ominous, very ominous. It looks like she's kind of looking over her shoulder over here too. So it makes me feel like you're being stalked. Somebody's watching you, right? And you're a little mm, unsure here. You feel like you have to protect yourself. From the seduction. You know, maybe old wounds. Let's see. So what does spirit have to say here? We have the sun. Which is very joyful, new beginnings, transformation. She has her brand new newborn baby here. Sunflowers, it's a seed, which is a nutrient. Right, and an apple would be a nutrient too. Except for it looks like she has candy. This can have to do with um, your freedom. I mean, this is spiritual challenges. You're having some sort of spiritual challenge. This is like Adam and Eve. You know, maybe you don't want to be seduced by something. By a religion, maybe. Uh, by somebody else. But in your spirit here, you're so free. Just, let's see. Um... Can you explain this one's just so strange. Um can you explain the sun card? Okay, this is about courage and freedom. And balancing things out. Balancing out your emotions. I mean, this is very spiritual right here. Um, this would be like heaven almost, right? We got the heaven and the hell. And then we have our angel here. Yeah, there's, I feel like you have a stalker for sure. Uh, somebody's seducing you. You feel a little afraid. Um, and then 
there's like the sense of right and wrong over here. Can you tell me more about this? That's the temperance card. Something about temper, if this is the temperance. Um, maybe somebody has a temper and you don't feel quite safe here, right? Because you have a stalker. Um, can you give me more information about the sun? All right, and then we have, uh, it looks like the king of wands. And... Is it like snakes right here that he's sitting on top of? Looks like a coil of snakes, um, which is crazy. And then he's got like a gecko down here. And this is behind him. Oh, wow. See, and there is a large snake right here. Yeah, I definitely feel like there's somebody watching you. And, uh, you know, maybe they want to have this, like, a love relationship with you. But they're, like, really stalkery and uh, kind of a snake in the grass. Right? This guy doesn't really seem all that friendly here. Not inviting. Mm -hmm. And then here we have the Four of Cups, which are all knocked over. And there's a crab here. Does it represent cancer? Yeah, we also have Leo here with the lion. And the snake. Snakes are in the world card as well, which I've been dreaming about. Okay, and then um, all these cups are knocked over here. Your, emo your emotions are poured out. You can't contain your emotions. Um, and there is kind of something dangerous here. If you were to go pick that up, this crab might snap at your finger. So you don't really seem that concerned. I mean, you're a little concerned, but not, not too bad. You know, like you were kind of just looking over there to make sure. I don't, you know, I don't know. It's a little unsure there. Okay, I see. You're looking at um, a ship out in the the ocean here. Kind of looks like a pirate ship. Pirates knocking over all your cups. Um, yeah, this could be a pirate here stealing something from you, making something feel dangerous. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna clarify the sun still. Knight of Swords, this person is coming at you with the vengeance. Um, impatient, daring, assertive. Stability, structure, protection, control, focus. Yeah, I really feel like you do need some protection here. Somebody is definitely stalking you. And they do want to have some sort of relationship with you. Um, but they're coming at you really aggressively. This is really what they want, but the way that they're coming at you... Um, 
trying to seduce you. You're not really sure what's real. But you can feel it. You're definitely looking over your shoulder. Interesting. All right, let's see the question. The quality of your life, our life is directly cor correlated to the quality of our decisions. How to use. The decision deck works best when you answer each card in numeric order. Work through each question and push yourself to fully tease out every detail. All right, so actually, I think this is, okay. I always feel like this is just directions for the whole deck, but we're going to keep going with it. Uh, once completing card 25, you finish the decision-making process. Set a reminder for six months to review. After six months, use the review cards to reflect and learn from your decision. Over time, your confidence and skill to and skill with decision making will grow. Let's dive in and make the decision. All right, so there is a message here, even though this is like a weird card because I feel like this is just like telling you how to use this deck, but it works best when you do each card in numeric order, right? So there's an order to this. Work through each question and push yourself to fully tease out every detail. All right, you really need to look at the details because this person is, you got this weird feeling about this person, right? And they do want to offer this to you. Maybe they've told you this. But because they're being deceitful, you're constantly looking over your shoulder. You need to look at every detail of what's actually going on. Look at every detail here. This is candy. It's not an apple. This is not healthy for you. This is a hybrid person. You are sitting here naked. You're very vulnerable. You don't even know what this person is. They're just playing this beautiful music in the background. And you're like, oh, yeah. Right? But you're very wary of this. Something about six months. You need to review this. Reflect and learn from your decision. Over time, your confidence and skill with decision-making will grow. Let's dive in and make a decision. Diving in. Maybe she's trying to get in the water here. Right? If you don't make good decisions, the quality of your life is going to not be very good. You're going to have a lot of snakes here. And pirates. So let's see what your hand is. You got the Joker. Are you kidding me? You know, <laughs> two queens. This is about advice. And let's look at the Joker here. Motherly advice. Um, the Fool, the Joker who's entertaining, is entertaining. Thorite, radioactive, two, basalt, this is about unity, you know, this person wants to be in union with you, four, it's about foundations, you're also digging at the foundation here, diopside, uh, azurite, beautiful, and wolfenite. Okay, you have two queens. That's about advice. It's about knowledge.
Don't let this person fool you. You need to have a good foundation on what unity is. Fox spirit, think on your feet. This is a nine, this is about wisdom. Thinking on your feet here. This is about your survival, ultimately. But the devil is very persuasive. The devil can make themselves look and be something different than the, than what they really are. Right? The devil is making themselves look like they're the sun. But they're not. And you have this feeling in your body. You just know it. Lizard spirit. Dream the world into being. Hmm, interesting. That's like very much like this. You're dreaming this up. Right? That's not reality though. This isn't reality here. This lizard has these wings. I mean, maybe it is somewhere. <laughs> somewhere in the world, there's lizards that have wings, but not any that I know of. This is an 11 card. You're in alignment. You have downloads of intuition. You're feeling the intuition. You're all knowing that this isn't real. You're being seduced. You're being watched. Okay, and this could be online. New moon in Leo, this is about courage again. We have the lion over here. And more sunflowers. Sunflowers as new beginnings. The seed, the nutrition. Shine. Mm -hmm. Something about continue to shine, like you have the sun here, is literally shining. Continue to shine. New moon in Virgo. This is about perfectionism. This is about uh, doing things right. Trust all will be well. Mm hmm. Yeah, this doesn't feel like a um, a total direct threat, but this person is definitely not coming at you right, and they're stalking you a little bit, and it's kind of giving you this queasiness, um, but you're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. Mars, force, yeah. changes. Force change, you know, it could, somebody watching you being a stalker can also be very forceful. They're very aggressive over here, very assertive and direct. They're impatient. Also a perfectionist, Virgo, right? They want to make this perfect. So maybe they're stalking your, um, your social media in order to find out the kinds of things that you like because they want to make it perfect, right? Whatever, if they're going to ask you out on a date, they want to know more about you, but they're kind of, um, kind of being a snake in the grass and, and it's like pirate here. Like taking something from you, it's taking like your your sense of um, stability and freedom and security. 
like you're trying to hide maybe. You're trying to get under the ground there and hide. And here is the world card. Wow. Which is where we started from the very beginning. Um, in my dreams. Right. This is about new beginnings. Things ending and having a new beginning. Uh, this is the 10th house. It's a seven card. This is about spirituality. You know, the world is powered by the sun. This is in the spirituality uh, spread here. We also have a clock. It is uh, 1243. Well, 43, and then we have 34, which is palindrome for 43, right? Um, we have a couple books back here. It's gene graphic, something. I don't even think these are real words. This looks like it says campaign. It's only a matter of time. All the spheres of the world here. We have the zodiacs here. We have all the different planets and the rotation. So, yeah, I definitely feel like somebody's stalking you from your social media, um, being in the world here. All right, let's see your 10th house. Oops, get my little cheat sheet here. What is in your 10th house? So we have, here we go. In the 10th house, it's about career. Uh, this represents the individual's career and profession, their reputa reputation, public persona, ambitions and motivations, success associated with Earth, Pentacles, Capricorn, and Saturn. All right, so maybe somebody's stalking you at work. Maybe you are a YouTube. Um influencer and this is how this person has found you um, you might even have something to do with astrology you could be a tarot reader you could be um, somebody who's reading horoscopes Twelve forty three. That might resonate with somebody. Okay, pile number three. That was your reading. Be very careful out there. Somebody is watching you. It's affecting your emotions. Um, and this person is not quite what they seem. So be very, very careful out there. I want to thank everybody for being here. And if you found this to be useful, please share, like, and subscribe. Visit my website, check out my swag, get some gear, and explore new things, new ways of thinking. New opportunities, new choices.
I want to thank you and our angels for being present for the messages that have come through in this reading. If you found this to be helpful, please like and share this content so others can benefit as well. Seek the subscribe button and don't forget to get notifications so you never miss a reading. The more love you share, the more love you receive. And you can find more love right here in these other videos. For more information about this channel, personal readings, swag, and donations, check the links in the description box.